Welcome to another video from Travel Smart Seniors and join us as we visit a delightful town in southern France and we'll explain to you the connection between blue jeans and togas. We had just finished a cruise in Barcelona and decided to take the train up the Spanish and French coast to the city of Nîmes. The trip along the coast was absolutely spectacular with lots of views of many lagoons and bays along the way. We even saw some windsurfers out there. We passed through Bézier, which might be worth coming back to sometime to visit. We couldn't have asked for a better day and it was very relaxing traveling along these small villages on the bays. Nîmes is a very compact city and just about everything is easily walkable and it was a short walk from the train station to our hotel, the Apart Hotel City. The Apart City is a French chain of hotels that combines the benefits of a hotel with that of an apartment. Ours had a full kitchen and many of those in other cities do as well. This was but a short walk from the train station and it turned out it was very, very close to the arena so it made it a perfect location. Now Nîmes is called the French Rome for a very, very good reason, and this arena is the highlight to the Roman architecture in the city. It was built in 70 AD and is extremely well preserved, and we'll take a closer look at the arena in just a minute. The Esplanade Charles de Gaulle was right in front of our hotel. It went from the train station all the way up to the arena. The day we arrived, there were protests going on, and it seemed like it was mostly older people. Well, it turns out they were protesting the raising the retirement age in France. At the end of the Esplanade is a large fountain erected at the end of 1851, and the woman represents the city of Nîmes, and she has some of the Roman monuments on her head as a crown. At the end of the esplanade is the arena, and we do find some interesting artifacts that point to the current use of the arena these days, and that is bullfighting. This area is very nice at sunset, so if you have a chance to get out and see it during that time, you'll get spectacular views. The arena was built around 70 AD and is a smaller version of the Colosseum in Rome. Today, it's used for concerts, bullfights, and other gatherings, which I will show you later. You can take a tour of the arena if there's no event going on, and you can go right into the bowels of the arena, or go back upstairs to see the arena itself. Now, bullfighting here is a little bit different. It doesn't have the matador and picadors as Spanish bullfights do, but the bull has a ribbon between its horns, and a bunch of men try to pick the ribbon from between the horns. So, no bulls are harmed in the process. However, I couldn't necessarily say the same thing for the bullfighters. Now, right next to the arena is the Museum of Roman Artifacts, and it's in a very modern structure, which is quite a contrast to the old arena sitting right across from it. The museum has a nice rooftop garden that can get spectacular views of the city from it. But the museum's more than just Roman times. It covers a lot of the prehistory of the area, including some very primitive things, and then it starts to get into some of the Roman artifacts as well, including a bull, so there was always bullfighting here. There was one exhibit that we found really interesting, and that was the emergence of the mosaic. The mosaic started out in Asia Minor in the 8th century BC, progressed to Greece, to Rome, and then finally in the late 1st century BC it arrived here in Nîmes. Now all the museum hopping made us somewhat hungry, so there's a very good place close to the arena to go to eat, and that's the La Place du Marché. There are numerous restaurants around here, uh, also including some by the Colosseum itself, but this was our favorite. We came here a couple of times, and of course, French cuisine is hard to beat. Pommes frites were an ever-present staple, but of course there were some nice salads and desserts, and I particularly liked the Dame Blanche, which was an ice cream sundae. A few steps from the restaurant is the Crocodile Fountain, and it's a significant symbol of Nîmes. 
It goes all the way back to Augustus, who defeated Mark Antony and Cleopatra and brought Egypt under Roman control. The crocodile represents Egypt, while the palm tree represents victory over Egypt. There are a number of restaurants in the same area, and also right here is the Theater of Neem, and you might be able to catch a production. Also nearby is City Hall, with yet another protest out front, but they're younger, so I don't think it's about pensions. Right next to the square is the Catholic Church of St. Perpetua. It's kind of ironic because she is famous for her martyrdom in the Roman amphitheater of Carthage in 203 AD. This is yet another connection between Nîmes and the Romans. Right around the corner from the church is a carousel on a big square, and there are also lots of nice restaurants on this square. We had a really good lunch there one day. A short walk from the carousel is the Museum of Old Neem, and it's housed in a former bishop's palace, and it tells the story of Neem since the end of the Middle Ages through everyday items and some very luxurious interiors. Denim is very important in the history of Neem, and it was invented here, and it actually is Serge de Neem, which was converted into denim. Then Levi Strauss found out about it and started importing it into the United States. Strauss made the material even more durable by adding copper rivets to the pockets, thus the birth of blue jeans. The museum also covers the role of textiles in Nîmes in the 17th and 18th century, plus it showcases some of the furniture of that time. Next, we travel down Quai de la Fontaine. This is a series of canals that served the aqueducts that were built during Roman times, so this is still another connection to Rome. We come across the entrance to the Jardin de la Fontaine, and it was built around Roman structures from the ancient city of Nemesus, which was the Roman name for Neem. These canals are part of the ancient Roman water system that carried water from the springs in the garden throughout the city. Opposite the gate, at the very end of the garden, is a tower magna, it's called, and it's an ancient Roman fortification that was part of the original city walls in the first century BC. The gardens were designed around the source of the fountain, which was a natural spring that was vital to the Romans, and the water was channeled into a large central basin, which created a beautiful reflective pool. On the left side, as you go into the area, is the Temple of Diana, which was a Roman building that was thought to have been either a temple or a library. It's in pretty bad shape, but it still gives you a deep sense of history for the garden. Right next to the temple is an outdoor dining area where you can get some drinks and also a delightful lunch with the requisite pommes frites. So now we leave the fountain area and head back towards the arena, and we go by an extraordinary place, and it's the Maison Carré. This Maison Carré is one of the best preserved Roman temples in the world, and is a key architectural landmark in Nîmes. It was built in the first century BC, and it's a Roman Corinthian architecture. It was used as a church and now houses a museum, and across from it is the Carré d'Art which ironically is a museum of modern art. Sadly, we didn't have enough time to go into it. Not far from the museum is the Church of St. Paul, which was constructed mid-19th century, and it's a neo-Gothic church, and I'm told it's worthwhile to go inside and take a look. Again, we just didn't have the time. We were in Nîmes in the spring, and we got an unexpected treat, and that's the Roman days in Nîmes, and it takes place in the spring. This particular spring, it was in May, but you need to check and see when it is each year. But where else in the world can you see Roman soldiers using cell phones? The festival features a Roman market where you can explore stalls that sell crafts, food, and beverages inspired by ancient Roman recipes. All of the participants are dressed in very authentic Roman costumes, but still with cell phones. You can even get ice cream from a costume vendor, or you can visit the falconers with their live falcons, or watch some of the gladiators battle it out. 
It's really great fun and everyone gets into the act. Oh yes, and did I mention gladiators? They actually reenact fights in the square next to the fountain here, and we see who the victor is. Then it seemed like every five minutes there was a parade going somewhere in a different direction, and I marveled at how accurate and nice the costumes were. Now here's some more, and they're not quite as well armed as the others. This is the largest reenactment of any kind in all of Europe, and the participants come from all over Europe. You have to give it to them, they're excited and enthusiastic. Then we come across the parade of the patricians, who seem to be in the upper class and dress quite well. Then these guys seem to be quite serious. I don't think I'd mess with them. It left me wondering who coordinates all this and then makes all the costumes. Part of the program included some ticketed shows in the arena itself. Now comes my favorite of all the costumes. Now this concludes our little tour of the French Rome. I hope you enjoyed it, and please take a moment to subscribe if you did, and leave any comments that you may have. We use Nîmes as our base for day trips to other parts of southern France, including Avignon, and especially Provence. There will be some videos describing those day trips into this part of southern France.